Welcome to Kitchen Chemistry, a series where we do a few experiments in my home and you can copy them along in your home. Mostly in the kitchen, obviously, that's why it's called Kitchen Chemistry. This is aimed at people of all ages and so there is a mixture of different difficulty levels and different understanding levels of chemistry. But never mind about that, let's do some chemistry. If you need to know about safety, which you do, read the instructions in the text below. Jumping in as usual, what we need today is some starch. This is cornstarch that I'm going to use. You could also use mashed potato powder. Some salt, this is just standard salt, cheap is better. Some way of measuring it, a pan to heat it up in and some water. Preferably also a spoon to stir it with and an oven to heat it up later. I'm going to use a measuring spoon to measure it out, but you could use anything it doesn't really matter, we're going to use American um, proportions. The recipe is quite simple, it's two uh, volumes of starch, one of salt and one of water to start with. In this first step I'm going to use uh, tablespoons, that's 15 milliliters, but it doesn't really matter what units you use, you just end up with more. Obviously a huge amount of this isn't really useful, so we'll just make a small amount even in this demonstration. As you can see, I'm making a terrible mess, and so I'm gonna to have to tidy up in a bit. But uh, if you are a bit more careful than I am, then you can do it without having to tidy up so much. I'm gonna fiddle around at high speed now, just to, so it's not quite so boring for you. And then I'll pour the salt into the measuring spoon. It's a good way to avoid having to wash the spoon in between times, and then we can pour the water in. Um, you will be able to see that I make a mess there, but obviously you can get more water out of the tap if you're in a country where water isn't so difficult to get. When I've finished this, I'm going to go onto the water. Uh, it's not spectacularly interesting, but obviously it all takes time. So the film is very long. We'll go faster now as well. So in goes one unit of water as well, and then we're going to be off. You can see I've made the water dirty, so I'm going to have to change that. I'm going to stir it with a chopstick here. Any old spoon will do it. Um, it's not a problem, but I don't want to scratch the the metal too much. In the instructions I found on the internet I was supposed to stir this for 10 minutes. It doesn't actually make any difference with cornstarch. Um, nothing appears to happen. And then I was supposed to leave it for 20 minutes but also nothing happened. So uh, we will fast forward through this bit because you don't actually need to do any of it for our next step. If you use a different type of starch instead of cornstarch it won't behave quite the same as this. But as you will probably know, cornstarch is weird. It forms a thixotropic mixture where it goes stiff when you stir it and it goes liquidy when you don't stir it. I'm just coming around to probably point that out now. So just getting a little bit closer so that we can see a bit more. Um, it seems to be very jumpy, but never mind. Let's have a look at this. It's all kind of gloopy. If I move it fast enough, it behaves quite solid. If I leave it, it will fall together which means that we can't make anything any shapes out of it so I'm going to do something else because I need to uh, convert it into a polymer form and what I'm going to do here is put it into this mold which I prepared earlier it's made of aluminium and coated with oil that I heated up which is what the brown coating is you don't need to do that if you've got a cake case you could do it in that um, this is uh, one possibility we will get to the next possibility afterwards. You can see it dripping off and because it goes stiff it can be folded back in again really easily. That was the first possibility. The second possibility is if we heat it up. If we heat it up it will start to become more polymer-like and we will be able to mold it and form shapes out of it much more easily which is much more likely to be what you will have to do. So I'm going to stir it again while heating it up. It's not the most efficient way this Heat it up slowly if you do it like this, because otherwise you will burn it. Um, you will find, as I'm about to find, that it needs more water. So I needed uh, probably three times the water, so it was two starch, three water, one salt in the end. So here I am stirring it, it will start to cook, and then that will cause it to um, become, well, the water appears to disappear. It doesn't really, the starch changes form and it absorbs it. We'll talk about that later. You can see it gone hard there. So I'm going to have to do something. I will go and get some water. I'm about to add the second lot of water now. 
The way that I'm doing this is by putting it on and off the hot plate. It depends how your heater works, which is better. Um, I just need it to get a little bit warm and not to be boiling. I'm doing it, I've sped this up so that you don't have to watch it for hours. This is how it turns into a sort of more and more sticky toffee-like mess and it will get clearer and clearer as it gets cooked. This is uh, me getting some more water. This is the third lot of water. So as I said, three lots of water, two lots of starch and the salt, one lot of stock salt. We could do this as a science in a sciencey way, but unfortunately I can't tell how good your cooker is. So we'll have to do it more like cooking or art in that you cook it until it goes really sticky and uh, I will show you in a moment what, I, what it really should look like at the end. Ideally, drier is better because we need to get rid of the water eventually and the more water we need to get rid of, the more trouble it will cause us. So here it is, all sticky, and if you look at it carefully, um, where I stretch it out, it goes nearly clear. It started off white, and now in the end of this stretchy bit, it's nearly clear. It's a little bit difficult for the camera to see it, it's not very clear, it's kind of translucent and it sticks to my finger like it's something you pulled out of your nose. At this point we could add some fruit, food colouring, this is called crazy colours, but I'm not going to because I'm lazy. Uh, there it is again because I thought you didn't see it the first time. What I'm going to actually do is roll this into a ball and then try to jam it into one of the other holes in my mould. The mould is specially made so that uh, I can make tokens for supermarket trolleys here in Germany. I'm hoping to be able to uh, put them into the supermarket trolley instead of a one euro coin, just because that's an easy thing that I can make. Unfortunately, because they shrink, I have to make the hole quite a lot bigger than the thing that I want to make. So here I am jamming it into the mold. It's sticking to my fingers more than it does to the mold, which is already a good sign. Um, sticking to the mold is bad but it's obviously tricky to get it in there. If I wanted to mold it into a shape, you can mold it into any shape you like. You can also paint it with food coloring so you can have different colors in different places. It's uh, quite a versatile material really in some ways. Because I've got two di very different samples in here, I thought I'd probably cover them so that the water doesn't leave the first one very quickly and I should probably label them so I know what they are afterwards. So I put a one and a two on there and then I realized, because I'm an idiot, that my one and my two look very similar and it's not a very good way of labeling things. So I changed it. I know, and I should really have known this beforehand, that it is much better to use Roman numerals for numbering things in the lab because then you can't get them upside down and think they're a different number. Also, when you cook things, the numbers or the writing tends to get worse. It gets discolored by the heating and then it's hard to read. So our one is the one that's just poured in. It isn't cooked at all. And the two is pre-cooked on the surface of the cooker. You can see I've made a mess, so I had to clean it up. Then they were in the oven for two hours, at 100 degrees centigrade, whatever that is in Fahrenheit, I don't really care. Um, use proper units. Let's have a look at the results now. This is the first one from that um, mixture that wasn't heat treated beforehand, so it wasn't heated up in a pan. And you can see it's got little bits that are dry because it dried up on the top and other parts are a sort of yellowy transparent color and if we tap it on the surface let me move this over if we tap it on the surface it's quite hard the other one because it had more water in it hang on focus on that. The other one, because it had much more water in it, has not shrunk as much and it seems to be a little bit foamy where the water has left. So that's uh, two ways of not making it very well. We would have to control the heating a little bit better to get it really good. But also this one has ended up pretty hard. And I finally managed to, in another run, get one thinner because this um, starch plastic doesn't shrink as much as the um, other one that we're going to do next time. 
what I see is this is about the same size as my fake euro coin so I'm going to be able to use this one probably to open a supermarket trolley the other ones are too thick I also managed to color it unfortunately my food colorant isn't very well distributed through it it didn't, uh, it didn't spread very much you can see there are reddish patches from the red dye and the rest has gone a sort of yellowy color so you can color it with food coloring but it's uh, it depends on the food coloring mine wasn't very good it's also hard it shrunk quite a lot um, shrinkage is a big problem with these biopolymers because they contain a lot of water when they're wet and so obviously they have to shrink a lot when they dry it also takes a very long time to dry so this one isn't quite dry and that's why it's soft it would dry a little bit more and get a little bit clearer and a little bit harder if I left it long enough so what's going on here we start off with our starch in a nearly dry state there's quite a lot of water in apparently dry starch the chains of the starch molecule are very long chain molecules with OH bonds on the side which I've drawn in here in blue and the OHs have a positive charge on the H and a negative charge on the O but it's not a full charge and they will stick together or they'll also stick to water in between them and the starch in the cornstarch powder or in the potato powder is nearly crystalline it's nearly like a crystal so that's why I've drawn the little square box so it's hard and dry and in little pieces when we add lots of water that's the red dots in number two and heat it up then it separates the starch molecules and they float around the water is in between the chains of the starch and allowing them to move over each other so we can get out of the crystal structure and that can make it or we'll take it away from the powder that it was to a general clump mixing it usually helps at this point and if we were going to do it industrially we would certainly mix it if we get on to the third part we're looking at the interaction between the salt molecule and also the negative charge on the OH and we can see that that will probably also get stuck between the starch and as we dry it up again which we're doing in the oven it will dry out and we will try to get back to the crystalline structure that we had before that's a bad way of saying it but I've done it now so the starch will tend to go back towards the structure that it had before but that's very dry and brittle and to stop it from completely drying the salt will trap a little bit of water which I've tried to draw in four so to recap the red parts are supposed to be water and they are there beforehand but we add a lot of water and it nearly all leaves again and we get back to the same polymer just moved around to the shape that we wanted it instead of the shape that it came in the plant